Elias has um, got a really big selection, obviously. As do I. <laughs> what have we done so far, son? We've done our welcome for city. Okay. And then we've also done design for uh, this event for tonight. Just sort of went back to what this uh, event is all about. Uh, basically, based on Tūrama Wawai Wakato Tainui, so I try to hold on to that, acknowledge our tangata whenua. So we all over here, basically from Waikato to um, uh, over here. So, being from Tūrama Wawai Marae, um, growing up, we will all know this figure. Uh, there's a saying, uh, say the he piko he tanipa he piko he tanipa wakato tanipa rai. So there's at every bend of the Waikato River, there's a, a tanifa, a kaitiaki, or someone that's done some, something significant for that area. And then as well, we wear the same colour. Black is beautiful, and that's what I wanted to put on there as well. Um, also, I've, I've added a few. Um, Aboriginal designs in there as well. Um, I used to do a bit of art with some Aboriginal artists and they told me they um, on, on what what their stories were. So if you see some of the um, is it, uh, campsites and each dot represents a person on their campsite. So my whakaro was um, using their art to uh, explain this whakaro in the sense that each dot represents uh, a person from Tonui and then we all come together in an event like this whether it's a hui or whatever um, when it's on, we're on <laughs>
Ana, me i mai o hātia tātou te kīnita. Kā rā te kīnita ma, o heke te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te nā tātou katoa, he mai. Te rā koe a pati, a re, 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 a re. which was the name of Iwiko's pātaka kai, his uh, store, food store. So Hinana Kita Hinana Kitai refers to his food store 
and to the idea set to the land set to the water to find the key. The Heru Heru called all of the chiefs from around the country to the sea. In response, 82 chiefs and 4,000 people gathered at Pukal. Arrive, and something special needs to happen to deal with this entity, to show their solidarity for the king. The Heru Heru asked the various chiefs to each take in hand a strand emanating from a single mast. By so doing, they were pleading their commitment and setting the tone for the exhaustive discussions that followed. At that meeting, he decided uh, that one of the agenda items would be to talk about the establishment of the kingship. So a number of uh, a number of offers were made at that week uh, to significant uh, chiefs and to have a Uko offered the name of Portanto to Fiofra. Portanto to Fiofra was uh, born and raised around Cape Portahe, just across from uh, Taipei. King Nipala has not folded since the first king, Bolton Thong the Fiddle Fiddle, who was crowned in 1858. His son Tafio presided from 1860 until his death in 1894. Tafio was succeeded by King Wanda, who carried the mantle for 15 years until 1912, which saw the inauguration of the reign of King Tirata. 21 years later, the crown was passed to King Koroki. And in 1966, his daughter, the Abadani Kaabu, became the monarchy's first queen. Finally, seven generations later, King Tuhaitia was crowned in 2006. As the granddaughter of King Tahir, I just came out of here. She was dynamic. She had a personality beyond compare. She was a leader. Te was responsible for the resurrection of the kingdom. Te Puea emerged as a leader for the king at a time when the movement's morale was at an all time low. The land confiscations left Waikato Tainui destitute and demoralized. During his reign, King Mahuta begged Te Puea to come back to take care of her people, for she had chosen the middle-class lifestyle, to be to it, to enjoy the freedom. He recognized these special qualities that she had within her. The only way she had to seek and to resource an income was the harvesting of flax and the collecting of gum, coffee. So she set up a new temporary settlement a few miles from Manatapi in the Mercer Township. That settlement was called Te Pai Na. Simply meaning, this is good for now. At Te Pai Na, Te Pui had gathered a group of orphan children whose parents had been lost to the influenza epidemic of 1918. She nurtured and reared those children and it would be at night that she talked to the people and teach them many, many things. The Puea had high ambitions for her people and the king, and she would need all the loyal supporters she could muster if she was to turn her dreams into reality.
She uh, worked hard uh, to put out by establishing Tūranga Waiwai House as the political uh, home uh, of the kingdom. And whilst at the opening of there, she became aware of a certain parcel of land across the river that was being uh, ready for sale. She was able to purchase the land. That particular land was rubbish. On the morning of 11th August 1921, Te Puya and 170 followers from the Māori village at Manatakiri on the North Waikato loaded and they boarded river barges of the Roos Shipping Company and were towed over two days to a raw, overgrown piece of land upriver at Ngāruahia, where they hoped to establish a new, rejuvenated marae and living space. Just days before the river journey, Te Puya had called a meeting of the whole Māori community at Mahatakiri and read out the names of the 170 advanced guard who would accompany her, some of them orphans from the epidemic. She outlined the plan for the tribe's historic make or break gamble. I'm taking you away from these wet flats, she told the evening gathering. I have no idea how we shall survive. Much of it depends on how we work and how the Pākehā at Ngārawahia treat us. We may find it easier to die here than to live there. But we have to go and we are going to build a marae there. That will be suitable for everybody throughout the country. A marae that one day people will visit from all over the world. And we're going to do it for Waikato and for our king. Piri Pautapu, aged 15 years on the day of departure from Manatafiri, described to historian Michael King, 55 years later, how it all felt. It may have been a day of hope in Tapuya's mind, but everybody was crying. It was like the feeling our ancestors must have had when they left Hawaii. Families were being divided, friends were being left behind. We were going on a journey from the known to the unknown. We were leaving a place that had so much history for us, the home where most of us had grown up, played, made friends, fallen in love, and been taught everything we knew. I cried freely with the old people. <laughs>